Cheating wife's lover came to her after party. You won't believe what they did next. Keep watching. Andres knew Dolores, by the way. From where? Through Rodrigo, I think. We all went to school together. I set Dolores up once for fun. I told the guys there was a girl waiting for them in the girl's locker room. Dolores was in the shower. She came out and there she was. Hello, beautiful. How did I know Dolores was serious about martial arts? And one of the guys recognized Dolores. He knew who she was dating and he knew how it would end. So he backed off, but she intercepted them and they said I was the one who set them up. That night, Dolores beat the shit out of me in the dorm. And last Friday, I saw her get into it at the restaurant, and I realized I'd better not risk my face. I didn't think Isabella would show up and put up a fight. Tell me, if I tell you about the murder, do I get credit for it? We will plead, and the court will take that into account in sentencing. Then listen up. Dolores's husband-to-be lived in town, never told anyone what he'd done. He just hung around town, but he made a decent living. No one knows how he ended up in Central Asia. According to the police, his brakes failed on a mountain descent. He crashed. What about the real thing? Actually, he was one of yours. The truck was carrying goods for Andres, but on the day it left our town, the driver's partner suddenly fell ill, and somehow Dolores' husband, Miguel, took his place behind the wheel. She didn't realize he was on a business trip. Someone told Andres that Miguel wasn't who he said he was, and the truck was intercepted. The merchandise disappeared. The truck went off without the goods, and the main driver was nowhere to be found. Eventually, the sick driver disappeared, too. And you think Andres did it? Yeah. He's the one who sent the men to intercept. He made the drivers disappear with his knowledge. So Miguel didn't die on our territory, and that's what the capital is doing now. But we've got one driver missing. I will verify this information. Deputy Enrique arrived with a warrant and brought clothes. The men came out, Diana got dressed under Valentina's supervision, and was taken to the pre-trial detention center, bypassing the temporary detention center. Enrique drove from there to a cafe to meet Juan. Juan was already there and ordered dinner for two. When he saw his freen, he said, Go on. Talk about keeping your family together and what Dolores has given you. She already called me. I'm not changing my mind. Divorce. And it's the right thing to do because of the situation you're in. What's the situation? Just because I became CEO? It's a very hot position. Radically interfering with the fleet, security, you could incur the wrath of the police. And get into an accident. What do you mean? When I was deputy, I didn't supervise those structures. The head of security, by the way, supervised the garage and selected the drivers there. Why him? It was believed that only drivers could steal. They transported material valuables. They were given powers of attorney to receive them. The guards would check and control them. Tell me, do you remember how Dolores' husband died? The papers that came from Central Asia said that his brakes failed and the car flew into the abyss. Everything burned up, the car and the cargo. I don't know how Miguel got behind the wheel. He didn't work for us. That's when we got a head of security. I was the lead engineer at the time, and I was in my own department. Who was the general? Andres had just been appointed, and the former CEO passed away. He had a heart problem because of the accident. He died on the job. Now listen to me. Don't get into anything and don't dig. Not a word about our conversation or the fact that you know me. If we talk about the intentions of the new management, talk. The old system Andres created will not be changed, because it has proven itself. Why? I have ideas. Then you'll be the second CEO to die of a heart attack. If they ask about your wife, say that after the reunion, you decided to divorce her. So it is, indeed. But what's the point of all this? Anyway, it's not for everyone. Your life depends on your tongue. It turns out that the CEO, Andres, created this firm to cover up drug trafficking from Central Asia. Miguel found out, so he went along the route to identify the traffickers. But he didn't succeed, so they killed him. Now Andres has put his assistant Diana under your wife. 
Her goal was to get her friend drunk and create a series of videos to blackmail you. No one expected you to break up with your wife because of what you saw at the restaurant. They expected a fight and a scandal. Tonight, at the meeting, they're gonna probe you again. If they don't like you, it could end sadly for you. Is it that serious? This is very serious. Several vans make regular flights to Central Asia, regularly bringing goods and bringing drugs with them, and special stash houses. Your bug, Andres, he's been running the shipment and he's gone underground, so you're going to answer to us. There are people involved in the scheme, and I need to find them and have solid evidence of this drug traffic, which I came upon by accident. I get it. I think you're right. Did you know Miguel? Yeah, he's a graduate of our academy. Graduated before me. I didn't know he got married here. What happened in Central Asia is still a mystery. And it's been a long time. But I'll drive up to the region tomorrow. Something will become clear. You have an exam today. I'll wait for you tomorrow, after work, in this cafe, same time. Juan said goodbye to Enrique. At exactly 7 while p.m., Dolores entered the cafe. She went to the table occupied by Enrique. He stood up and invited her to sit down. Dolores started with a question. Tell me, did the cigarette seized in the restaurant do anything? What you'd expect. Not only did your friend get drunk on something, she was given marijuana. It's called a joint, or just marijuana cigarettes. A regular tobacco cigarette is used to score a joint. Santiago had these joints with him. How did you know it was a joint? Simple. All these Alphonse will not, flirting with a woman, smoking cigarettes. Here, either he will not smoke at all, or will smoke an expensive cigarette. But for smoking marijuana, cigarettes are used, from which, for stuffing, the tobacco is shaken out completely. The inner end of the cartridge case is slightly bent with a fingernail. But sometimes a little tobacco is left in the cigarette to prevent the marijuana from spilling out through the case and into the mouth. Marijuana is either poured onto the palm of the hand and scooped up with the edge of the cigarette, occasionally tamping it down, or sucked into the cigarette. The end of the cigarette is crumpled with the fingers so that it completely covers the stuffing. The tissue paper is then pulled over the cartridge case until the stuffing is compacted to the desired degree. I didn't even realize it was possible. In Europe, America, and Australia, cigarette paper self-rolls are used instead of joints. Tell me what's going to happen to Isabella. How can I help her? It's an issue I'm addressing, but not all at once. She's already beaten Diana pretty badly. How do I talk to Diana? Alas, that is impossible. She's in the hospital, so I'm going to go get her a care package. I'll talk to her. Or do you need permission to visit her in the hospital? We work together. Well, she's out of the hospital. She's in custody and in the detention center. For what? During a search of, shall we say, the battlefield, or rather her apartment, drugs were found. She's in custody. And Santiago? He's a drug addict. Drug use is not a crime, but buying and selling is punishable. It's been proven that he gave Isabella marijuana, Hence, her erratic behavior. I need you to help me get Juan and Isabella back together. It's more complicated than that. It's not that simple. I'm going to ask you to stay away from Juan for now. I think they'll find common ground, but not right away. When? I'm working on it, and I'm glad he was able to hold his temper and not put up a fight. Tell me, Dolores, was Miguel your husband? Yeah. Why are you asking about him? I was friends with him in my day. How did you two meet, and where did he work? We met at a karate class, and he was also a member. We started dating, and then he proposed to me. He never told me where he worked or who he was. He dressed simply, unpretentious. How did he get to Central Asia? That's a mystery to me, too. He called and said he had to go away for a week on business. And then... I got the news that he was dead. The car he was driving had fallen into a cliff. Dolores, has anyone ever told you he's on the police force? Do you know something? Maybe. 
But first, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. What are we drinking? Me? Cocktail? Non-alcoholic? And to eat? I have a snack at home, but I won't say no to a brownie and coffee either. Andres was in anticipation of his guests. At last, his chief of security, Rojo, showed up with a luxurious gift for his boss. They went into the office, and Rojo told them, Looks like Diane made a mess of things. We had our lookouts at the joint Friday night. What she was planning didn't work out. Juan didn't fall for the scandal, and, what's more, he left his wife and went home. But Isabella's friend Dolores intervened. Why didn't ours intervene? They were instructed to observe only... But that's not all. Saturday morning, Isabella came to Diana's house, caught her there, I believe, with her lover, who was at the restaurant. Isabella beat them both up, called the police. They barely got through. Diana was taken to the hospital on a stretcher, under a sheet. And the lover? He disappeared in the commotion. We have to find him. I believe it was Santiago. Diana planned to use him to get Isabella away from her husband. That's not all. What else? Diana's not in the hospital. As my people found out, she was taken away under escort. She wasn't admitted to the isolation ward. Listen to the mission. We need to find out where the police are holding Diana and find this Santiago. Santiago's not that important, but Diana knows a lot. She better shut up, and Santiago better shut up too. Juan's coming to visit now. No talking to him about his wife. No hints. And we need to get in touch with our man in the region. Now, go. The head of the guard went out and merged with the guests, who gradually filled the cottage. Andres sat thinking. He realized he was in trouble. Showing off for Diana, he had told her too much in bed. If she gets a tan, he's finished. And at that time, his secret phone rang. He answered it readily. I'm listening. A voice altered by a special program asked, What? You've made a mess of things. It's all right. We're working on our mistakes now. What does Diana know about our business? I didn't initiate her. But it was you who assured me that Juan's wife would fall into the trap and that Juan would go to his knees to save his wife and his marriage. I told you he was the wrong man. Have the head of security wire the CEO's office. I need to know everything he does. Goodbye. The guests began to arrive, and his wife called Andres to meet them. Among those who arrived were the heads of the companies with which he cooperated, the co-founders of his enterprise, and, simply, the right people. Juan also came. He heartily congratulated Andres once again on his retirement and gave him his gift. Andres thanked him and said, Juan, stay close to me today and memorize all these people. You'll be working with them in the future, and you'll need help from some of them. You had plans to make. It's a good business, but there's a lot of competition. You can't do it without the UKS, and that man over there is his boss. Look at that woman over there. She's from the tax office, and she's also the boss. Among the invited guests was Rodrigo. Improving the moment, he went up to Juan and said, Look, man, I'm sorry about Friday night. I had no idea Isabella would act like that but I hope you two made up. Yeah, it's okay. I'm divorcing her. Are you crazy? After all these years of marriage? You have kids? They won't understand. Look, it's amazing, after so many years of marriage, to humiliate me like that in front of all my classmates, my friends. Some of them are now employees at the firm I run. What do you think I should have done? Pick a fight? How would that have ended? She told me openly that I'm not letting her live. She didn't hesitate for a second to put her petty interests before the honor of her family. She basically spit on me as the husband she'd lived with for so many years. Besides, if she did it so easily, maybe it's not her first boyfriend. So what, you're not even going to try to put up with her? No. I heard a rumor that she and Diana had a fight. Rodrigo, you know I'm not interested in this topic. Sorry, I'm going to go support Andres. It's a shame he retired so early. What? You don't know? What don't I know? He's complaining about his heart. He says he can't carry the load any longer. When he suggested you at the shareholders' meeting, I immediately supported your candidacy. Later on, the evening passed quietly, without excesses. 
The invited heads of departments congratulated the boss and welcomed the new one. When the evening was over, the guests departed and Juan went home. About 12 o'clock at night, he walked through the garage into the yard and to his front door. Entered the house. He went into his makeshift kitchen, drank a glass of water, and went to bed. When Isabella arrived home from the police, she took off her dress and threw it in the trash. After that, she sat in the jacuzzi for half a day, trying to warm up and wash off the dirt she had collected in the TDF. At about six in the evening, she went down to the first floor, went into the kitchen, had a snack, and sat near the locked door to the half occupied by her husband. He did not appear at his usual time. As she dozed off, she heard, through her slumber, that her husband had gone into his room. He was alone. She heard him wash his face and then go into some room. After sitting for a while, Isabella knocked hesitantly on the door. There was no answer. She knocked louder. This time too, however, Juan did not answer. Then she began to pound on the door as hard as she could and heard, What do you want? Do I have to move into a hotel? Juan, we need to talk. You don't know anything. We talked Friday and Saturday. Right now, I'm not ready to talk. I don't see the need for it. You told me everything on Friday, and I heard and saw. Juan, I wasn't myself. That's too bad. You were not yourself. As a result, barriers were removed and you spoke your truth. Thank you. Now, I'm tired, and I need to rest. Juan was heard going into his room and slamming the door shut. With her head down, Isabella wandered back to her room. She hated herself now. Her foolish prank had cost her family. She began to remember and piece together the scraps of scattered pictures. She remembered that she was well aware that Diana was divorcing her. She had that feeling, but she thought she was fooling Diana. She let her pour a shot of cognac from a small bottle that Diana had brought with her and drank it with Diana. That being said, Diana didn't drink the cognac. She drank the dry wine that was on the table. Then there was this stupid argument. She had to prove that her husband was under her thumb. Well, she did. Isabella picked up the phone and dialed Dolores. She answered a little while later. She said, Isabella, I'm listening. Dolores, Juan won't talk to me. What did you want? You embarrassed him in front of the whole group. Well, that's okay. Diana's doing worse. Is she dead? No, she's alive, but she's been arrested and she's in jail. What was she arrested for? Enrique said drugs were found in her apartment. Enrique? Juan's friend? Yeah, he's on the case. Why didn't he interrogate me? I don't know. So, it turns out Juan knows everything? It's possible. Where did you see him? He called me in the morning for questioning, and in the evening we sat with him in a cafe. I just got home. Happy. What am I supposed to do? Go to sleep. The morning is the morning. In the morning, Enrique left for the region, as he had the right connections there. He called back in the evening and told his friend what he needed. He advised him, Don't come to the office. We'll meet in the countryside. It'll be warm tomorrow. We'll meet in a cafe, in a summer park. Enrique drove his car to the summer cafe at the agreed time. His companion was already there, and not alone. A gray-haired man came to meet him. Aurelio introduced him to Enrique, saying, Meet Benito, our legend of detecting. I told him about your questions, about Slavka. Benito modestly replied, I'm not that much of a legend. I'll tell you about Miguel. I didn't see it coming. Miguel was retained at the academy as a special education teacher, and they have uniforms and cadets from all the districts, and there's a drug spike in your town. So they decided to put him, as a native of these places, into a group of suppliers. He spent almost six months developing them. I insured him. He had a great cover story, and he married a student there. They found the group. But Miguel said there was something wrong. It was too easy. I told him not to go any further, so he hooked up with the truckers at his own risk. And once he gave one of them something, he was hospitalized with an upset stomach. And there was a lot of money at stake, so the main driver agreed to let Miguel be the co-driver. And that's where things got a little tricky. Miguel told me he was going to Central Asia and sent me a message. As a result, 
A lot of people in our office knew about it, and as I understand it, it was leaked. So, if you do anything, don't shine a light in our office. There's definitely a snitch in there. Can that happen in our department? No, we didn't even notify the department that we were developing the group on their territory. And what happened next? When our colleagues informed us that the truck had flown into the abyss, they did not even initiate a case, turning the whole thing over to faulty brakes. They didn't let our specialists into the case. They said the truck flew into the abyss with the cargo and everything burned up. And according to the bill of lading, his cargo was iron parts. How could they burn up? So the conclusion is self-evident. The car was unloaded, Slavka was killed, and thrown with the car into the abyss. The other driver disappeared. The driver who was supposed to go was gone too. They're still on the wanted list. What about the group? The group was taken, and they're probably still there. They did a decent amount of time, one of them just said, in a confidential conversation, that these drivers weren't from their group, that it looked like they'd been dumped by the competition to clear the market. The drug flow had dried up, and the brass, recognizing our work, closed the investigation. Miguel even got a commendation. I don't know, did they give it to his widow? No, nothing's been given to her. She's still in the dark. Look, maybe he's alive. No, we finally got the remains, did all kinds of forensics. Miguel this. And the talkative one from the group you took, where is he now? In the cemetery. He didn't make it to trial. Who's been on this case with us? The former general director of the firm. I don't remember his name, but he died of a heart attack, and the new one didn't seem to be involved. The new one, is it Andres? Yes, he is. Looks like he's been and still is running all this traffic. But there's less drugs in the city. Who can account for it? Besides, he entered the capital's markets. There was a signal from the capital that supplies are coming from our region. Looks like the city has made up its mind. Not just the city, but the company as well. We have to wait for the truckloads of goods to arrive. And to be sure. The main suspects are Andres, his head of security, and the superintendent. We need to identify the drivers, too. I don't think they've been used in disguise. They'd have to be in a special position. They know the suppliers, the transportation routes. I'm guessing someone's insuring them, so there's another group. And someone's taking the goods further, to the capital, if it's not them. Can't the new CEO help? I think he's under scrutiny, and they're probably looking for some dirt on him to tie to their case. Blackmailing his wife didn't work out so well. I just don't understand why he made the decision to break up with her so easily. Maybe he's got someone in mind. He had no one, but in recent years his life had become stable and confident and his wife began to take liberties that he did not like. He's been nagging her, but he's tried to live without conflict. She mistook his compromises for weakness and crossed a red line. That Friday night at the party was the final straw. You know, when you get yelled in the face, you're interfering with my life, at the top of your lungs, that it's heard by those who were in the conservatory at that moment, I probably would have punched him in the eye, but he held his temper and walked away. Yeah, it's not a pretty story, and a family falling apart. So what now? Now they'll be looking for dirt on him. Why don't we slip them something on him? He'll know more that way. I don't know. He's an engineer, not an operative. And there, if you slip up, you're a dead man. That's understandable, but we have to cover it up. Who do you need for the job? This firm? Yeah, in the office, closer to the general. Yeah, kind of need a PR person. Excellent. I have a man, and he's got a great story. He promoted a company in the region, but everyone there is on the run now. Wages are down and everyone is looking for work. He's been in the field for over 10 years. He's a shot in the arm, but he's not on the radar. Wouldn't that be compromising, a collapsed firm? No, it won't. The director there ended up embezzling money and running away. They're looking for him. I'll give you the man's details. Your job is to get him in. When the phone rang, Isabella was sitting in her bedroom, wondering what would happen next. 
The investigator from the department was calling, inviting her to talk to him. She got dressed, left the house, took a bus, and by the appointed time was at the door of the office. She knocked and heard, Come in. I went in. Enrique was sitting there talking to Diana. Diana, pale and still bruised, saw Isabella and said, Hey, girlfriend. Isabella did not respond to the greeting. Enrique said, Isabella, before I talk to you, I promised I'd let Diana talk to you, without any witnesses, so you have a little time before they take her to her cell in the detention center. Having said that, he left the office. Isabella sat down at the table across from Diana. Diana began to speak. That was a good one at the restaurant. Just one stupid question. How well did you ride your Mustang? And you fell for it. A couple drops of special cognac, and you were ready to prove to me that you had him under your thumb. That you could, in front of him, sleep with anyone I pointed out to you. You fool. Men like Juan. You have to hold on to men like Juan with both hands and no one. Don't let anyone near him or you. He left me because of that prank. You quit? Good for you. He did the right thing. That's because he's a real man. And what does a real man want? He needs a real woman who won't feel how much she's tied a man to her. She won't brag about how independent she is. I'll tell you, Dolores is a real woman. She loved her man, even though she lost him. And whoever she loves will be happy. And it'll be a real man. She won't fall for chaff. You're lucky to have met and married Juan, you fool. Appreciate it and cherish it. Remember that Juan is your greatest achievement. I tried to seduce him in uni when you two first started living together, and it didn't work. I tried again, and he didn't fall for it. He loved you. And you buried his love. And as you know, it's one step from love to hate. But there's no telling how many steps it takes to get back. I've always envied you, your life with Juan. I wondered what he saw in you. And now he's finally dumped you. Well, goodbye. I don't think we'll see each other again. I won't press charges against you. I already wrote a waiver. I said I provoked the whole thing. That's basically true. They gave you a terrible cocktail. And Santiago gave you a joint to smoke? You're a mess. How did you not kill us? I don't know. I honestly don't remember very well what it was like to hit you, and what happened in the restaurant. I don't remember at all. Okay, go. No hugging. Isabella walked out. Enrique immediately entered the office and called for an escort, and Diana was taken away. Enrique called Isabella into the office, pointing to the chair where Diana was sitting, and said, Have a seat. Thank you. No, thanks to me. Diana refused to file a report on you, or we'd be banging on the wall in the detention center. The squad didn't file a resisting arrest report either. Santiago, he said he wasn't hurt at all. Anyway, the case against you is dismissed. Tell me, what about Juan? He won't talk to me. He's blocked off the first floor and has a separate entrance. I don't know what to do. He wants a divorce. All right, don't cry. I'll hold off on the divorce. How are the kids? He sent them a video and they don't want to know me. What about him? I don't know. I haven't talked to Juan about it. The investigator who was in charge of Isabella's case came back into the office asking, Enrique, are you done yet? Yes, thank you very much. I'll leave Isabella to you and go. Don't go far. The general's back from the board in 15 minutes. Now he's going to give us the slap on the wrist. Isabella soon left the office building, where the staff had already gathered for an extended meeting. A general entered the conference room. A command sounded. Comrade officers! Everyone stood up. After the command, they sat down. The general habitually took his seat at the presidium table, adjusted the microphone and said, I salute you, and I want to tell you some not-so-pleasant news. I was informed at the board meeting that an inspection is coming to us tomorrow. A similar inspection of a district department in a neighboring region resulted in the dismissal of a number of employees and demotions. It was decided to initiate criminal proceedings for abuse of authority. So, keep in mind that this is very serious. Among the inspectors will be an employee of the Internal Security Service from the Capital. I will not hide the fact that, partly the inspection is connected with my retirement, 
My report is already signed by the minister, so be ready for the drill. You have until tomorrow to get ready. Shine your shoes, iron your uniforms. The general looked into the hall and, seeing Enrique, turned to him. How are we doing on this apartment trashing and drug bust? Enrique was taken aback. He had talked to the general about keeping everything secret. He himself insisted on it, and here he was asking about it in front of everyone. Nevertheless, he reported cheerfully, Two defendants were detained and are in pretrial detention. The materials were handed over to the investigator and a criminal case was opened. We are identifying the person from whom the drugs were purchased. The detainees are still silent. Nothing has been established operationally yet. I see. So make the unidentified person a separate case, and who are the defendants? Enrique almost gritted his teeth, but he reported, They are one Santiago, a local gigolo who lives at the expense of elderly women and Diana, an engineer of one of the private enterprises. Okay, and this one? She's the one who started the mayhem. The case is dismissed. Diana testified that she had provoked the scandal and had no claims. Santiago is accused of drug distribution because he gave Isabella some marijuana to smoke, but she did not know about it. Then he offered to snort cocaine, which triggered the scandal and the debacle. The version of kidnapping for the purpose of sexual exploitation was not confirmed. That's fine. Keep working. After the meeting, Enrique gathered his caseworkers and asked, Will someone clarify something to me about what this was at the meeting? Why the openness? In the evening, Enrique met Juan at a cafe, as agreed. Juan looked relaxed and inquired, How's Isabella doing? You're not locked up yet? No, there's no need to plant her, as it seems. It's a pity. She probably didn't like the excursion to the TDF, but if she had been in the pre-trial detention center, she might have understood something. Juan, did you hate her so much? Her and the kids. In fact, we should do a paternity test. I'm starting to have doubts. Look, this is getting paranoid. Aren't you being paranoid? You're telling me stories about drugs coming through my firm, that this fool was drugged to blackmail me, that I'm going to get hit on at the reunion. There was no talk of work at Andre's send-off and the drug story was made up to reconcile me and Isabella. I had a fight with the kids, too. They gave me a hard time about it. I told them to fuck off. I don't want to know them. My daughter barked at first, and then she started asking for money. That's what they need me for. I'm like a wallet. Juan? Stop! They're your children. I don't know about that. Whether they're mine or not. Well, I don't have time for this. I've got things to do. Juan got up and left the café. Enrique looked at him perplexed, not understanding what else had happened to his friend. He hated his wife, his children. He didn't want to know them. At 7 p.m., Dolores came to the café. She already knew that the case against Isabella had been dropped. They ordered dinner and a bottle of dry wine. Dolores asked, Tell me, is it to your credit that Isabella's free and the case is dropped? No, it's legal. She's innocent. Is it possible to reconcile her with Juan? Talk to him. Explain everything. I doubt that after seeing him today. I spoke to him half an hour ago, here. And what did he say? He hates both Isabella and the children. He thinks the kids aren't his at all. He wants to have them tested. Is he out of his mind? I don't know. I guess it's the euphoria of the new position. He's the CEO. I just hope he gets over it. What about Miguel? Dolores, I'm still working on that question. Andres sat and waited for his supervisor to call, and it rang. Without prelude, a question was asked. Did they find Diana? Not yet, but we know where it is. I know too. She's in the detention center, and she's got drugs in her possession, and you supplied the drugs. Look, you're retired anyway. Why don't you stand on a corner in town and sell cocaine retail? I don't get it. Don't you understand? She's going to turn you in, and you'll drain the whole system. All these years without a glitch. So turnover has increased tenfold from when we started. Tell the head of security to get that fool in the detention center. And that's Santiago, too. 
Also, there are some serious people in the capital ready to take a very large shipment. In fact, we need to use all our carriers. But before we do that, we need to talk to our suppliers. Call Juan. Tell him that you have received a favorable offer from the suppliers of goods and must send on a business trip Rodrigo, as a representative of the company, to negotiate. And cars, all six of them. But Rodrigo's out of it. He doesn't need to be on the subject. He'll be talking about the goods we're carrying legally. The head of security, who's also going with Rodrigo, will handle the special shipment. I'll give him the coordinates, what to talk about and who to talk to. Rodrigo will go with Rojo in a passenger car. Return the loaded cars to the security base and make sure no one is there. How quickly does it need to be done? The business trip is in a week and Diana and Santiago needed cleaning yesterday. What does bugging the CEO's office get you? He's had a falling out with the kids and wants a paternity test. He doesn't even want to know his wife. I'm thinking maybe he should plant someone. Who do you suggest? A secretary. Young, hot. What? You're with her too? No, it's a purely working relationship with her. Let him have a purely working relationship. You need a woman from the outside, a woman from out of town, and that we have nothing to do with it. He should meet her himself. But I'll think it over. Bye. The next day, an inspection came to the office. Aurelio was among the inspectors. He went into Enrique's office and introduced himself. Enrique dismissed his employees to their workplaces and finally said hello to Aurelio and asked hopefully, What did the capital say to you? Me? You have no idea. I didn't get my ass kicked in there. I got the full brunt of it. For what? For what? They've been working on this firm for eight months now, and they have a man embedded there who has a whole team working for him here in the city. They haven't interfered with your actions so far, but they've been controlling some of them. And who is their man? Do you seriously think that's what I was told? Anyway, there's an internal security officer from the Capitol among the inspectors, but it's a cover. He's in charge of this operation to develop the firm, and they've reached the finish line. He and I are meeting in your office this afternoon. Okay, I'll be there this afternoon. Aurelio left. An investigator entered the office with a claim. Look, is this your job? Which one? Santiago and Diana were transferred from the pre-trial detention center to an unknown destination. Even the special unit of the pre-trial detention center doesn't know, and they can't figure it out. There was no way I was going to give the command to send them to a stage somewhere. They gave me a ruling, signed by me to send me for some kind of examination. This is bullshit. Where do I point it? It's not there. File a report with the general, but I had nothing to do with it. After lunch, in Enrique's office gathered Aurelio and an inspector from the capital named Victor. He began with a story. Well, Mr. Officers, I'd like to point out that you've done well. At least you didn't disrupt the operation and in some places helped to intensify it. We are now entering the final phase. Our man has been working on this case for six months. All the participants of this drug trafficking, all the routes and suppliers have been identified. As of today, it seems possible to realize all this. But we don't know the most important thing, the leader, and no one knows him. He gives his instructions to Andres over the phone and his voice is distorted. And we can't find out who it is yet. What are your thoughts on this? Sorry, haven't gotten to this yet, but my message is brief. Go ahead. Diana and Santiago have been moved from the detention center to an unknown location. I know, we did it. This unknown person decided to physically eliminate them. To keep them alive until the trial, we've moved them to the capital. They'll stay there, then we'll bring them back here. During this time, the case will be realized. So don't worry about them. What else? Our general released some of the information on this case in a meeting yesterday. So I guess the leak has already started. Everything your general said at the meeting was prepared by us. If you have a mole and he's asleep, he has to move. We've already identified one in the region. 
it turns out, business-wise, we don't know much. How can we discuss anything and give advice and suggestions? Also true. Listen up. So, for today, it looks like Andres is in charge. But it's a front, although he's very involved in the work. He's got a security chief, a garage manager, 12 drivers, plus guards, mostly from the training center. Andres is the guy who organized all this. That's who we need. Enrique, your opinion. I don't know. The new CEO is a friend of mine. He has been working for many years in this firm and has never told me that there are any machinations going on there. But he's been acting a little strange lately. You mean Juan? Yeah. Chuckles. He is hardly in charge of all this, although he is certainly talented. But he's just an ordinary Ziz chairman, simply put, a nominal head of a firm created for the sake of drug trafficking and knows nothing about it. Andres realized that. But this guy knew about drug trafficking. That's why he retired. They put Juan in charge, and they need to nail him so he doesn't see what else his firm is doing. And he doesn't see it yet. So they need to keep an eye on him and make sure he's protected. Honestly, it's hard. I almost had a fight with him the last time I saw him. But I'm gonna try. What do you think of Rodrigo's founder? He and Juan went to school together. But he's not much of an organizer or a leader. Guys, think. He's out there. And he knows everything that goes on at the firm. And he's just eavesdropping on conversations. Our experts have looked into it. Almost all the executive offices are bugged, including the CEO's office. But the CEO's wiretap is fresh. And for the record, at the end of the week, all six cars are expected to leave for a large shipment of drugs. The head of security is going there to negotiate. Rodrigo's traveling with him as a representative. Rodrigo will deal with the legal goods, and Rojo will negotiate with the merchants and load the drugs. They'll be dropped off here at the security base. Where'd you get that information? In honor of his retirement, Andres was given a beautiful electronic clock for his office. And as luck would have it, he installed it at home, in his office, from where he's negotiating with the real head of the firm. And I think it's unnecessary to talk about the secrecy of the operation. Only you and those who've been working on it for six months. Here are lists of drivers, security guards involved in drug trafficking. Are you meeting with Juan today? Yeah, if he comes to the meeting. Isabella took a leave of absence from work and was deciding how to reconcile with her husband. She realized all the mistakes she had made while living with her husband and cursed herself. Now she was sitting at home. Juan went to work very early and came back late. I didn't want to talk to her about anything. He said he wasn't ready to do it yet. My daughter called and said, Mom, I'm sorry, but I don't understand what's going on with Dad. I watched the video again, and I don't understand why he left you there alone. Why didn't he pick you up from the restaurant? I asked him, and he yelled at me, and we had a fight. He said we should do a paternity test because he doesn't trust you anymore and that all I wanted from him was money. I don't know what's going on with Dad, but just in case, remember, you're his daughter and your brother is his son. I've never had another man in my life, and I take it you need money? Yes, Mom, if you can help, then help. I want to come home in two weeks and talk to you and Dad. What's going on between you two has got to stop, and I'm sorry about what I said to you on Saturday. I was wrong. Also, about my brother. He sorted himself out too, and he doesn't support Dad, and besides, I think he's getting married. But after this scandal, he won't say anything to Dad, and he won't ask him for anything either. He works part-time at some firm and is well-paid. Who's his girl? Her name is Milagros. Only I didn't tell you anything. They're already living together, renting an apartment. Tell you what? You all come together? And you and your husband too? I'll make up with Dad anyway. Don't worry about me. I'll see you all in two weeks. Tell your brother that. Mom found out about you. You don't know how. Okay, Mom, I'm gonna run. I love you. And I you. Isabella hung up the phone and thought, Well, the kids are grown. So, maybe I'll be a grandmother soon. Her mom had the same thing, though. Isabella met Juan at university and they married. Juan was sitting in his luxurious office, thinking. In principle, the firm was running smoothly. All the specialists were well-placed, but now, he was looking for a good PR manager. 
he needed a specialist responsible for creating and maintaining a favorable image of the firm and a particular brand belonging to the firm. At that time, a good-looking man of athletic appearance came in for an interview. He used to work in the region, but the firm there had collapsed. The director managed to withdraw all the money from the company's account and ran away. They're looking for him now. This man worked as a PR manager and was very well versed in this field. Every large firm has at least one PR manager. In large banks, corporations, companies, PR managers work in special departments or public relations offices. Juan, after a conversation, hired him with a probationary period of three months. When the interview came to an end, the office door opened and Rodrigo walked in. Seeing a man unfamiliar to him, he said, Juan, I'll come back later. Come on, Rodrigo, come on in. This is our new PR manager. We've got a new position, but we can't find someone for two months. After waiting for the new employee to leave, Rodrigo asked, Who recommended him? Uh, no one. It's an ad. We print him every week in the local gossip column. He used to work in the region, but now the company's gone under and he's looking for work in the periphery. Where's he gonna live? She says her sister has a house here. But that's really none of my concern. What about you? What are you doing here? Andres called me. He suggested a trip to Central Asia. He called me too. He says we can make a lot of money. I made an estimate, and it's almost 300% profit. But you have to negotiate, don't you? What kind of negotiator am I? Maybe I should take this guy. What guy? The PR manager. The one you just hired? He has a completely different task, and you need a lawyer. And this one can think up how to hold one or more events and put the developed concept into practice. That is, to directly conduct a presentation, press conference, exhibition, etc. that he has thought up. That's why Andres is offering me chief of security. I don't know. Rojo is an expert. And you? Why are you being so pompous? We graduated from the same university. You have the same degree as me. You're practicing. What about you? You're the founder of this company. Let's just say one of the founders. Here's a travel voucher for you and Rojo. He's driving his own car. We'll pay for his gas. You leave Friday. Monday for loading and next Wednesday, Thursday at the latest, you'll be home. How about you and your wife? Did you make up? No. I'm planning a divorce. I have a feeling the kids aren't mine either. I should get a paternity test. Juan, you've had enough. How do you live under the same roof with her? I have a separate entrance to the house. I don't see her in the house. I leave early, come back late. I eat like a white person in a cafe or a restaurant. You got a woman? No, I haven't gotten around to it yet. But I'll think about it. Friday. Rodrigo and Rojo left for Central Asia. Six trucks with replacement drivers left with them. No one noticed that the day before, four cars had left in the same direction, carrying tough guys who had decided to vacation in the south. There is no sea there, but it is full of exotics. At the end of the workday, Juan was preparing to leave the office when he suddenly received a call from Enrique. He replied, I'm listening. I'm listening to you. You don't show up at the cafe. You don't call. I just have a lot of work to do. I don't go to this cafe. I found another one with better food. It's kind of out of the way. Of course, now that you're a big boss, you'll be proud of yourself. Why don't we meet up after all? No, sorry, not today. The workday was over and everyone was heading for the exit. Juan also left the office, walked leisurely around the office, went downstairs and left through the back door to which he had the keys. An hour later, he was at an unremarkable motel five kilometers outside of town. He walked along the dimly lit paths between the guest houses and confidently entered one of them without knocking. A table lamp was burning in the living room and a man was sitting at the table who, hearing someone enter, put the papers aside and stood up to greet Juan's arrival, saying, Come on, come on. Thanks, I've already passed. Tea, coffee? Coffee, perhaps. What do you think? What's your conclusion? 
In general, I believe that Rodrigo is the boss of the whole drug business. What's more, Rojo knows it and works for him. That's why they went together. It's a lot of money. Justify. As for the rationale, it's simple. Rodrigo is too zealous in his inability to run a business. That's not true. He was one of the best in our class at university. Then he's very interested in my relationship with my wife. But maybe in reality, he doesn't have the confidence to handle the leadership? And your relationship with your wife, maybe because of guilt, he initiated the argument. But the rationale is accepted. He's being watched closely. Multiple groups, and we need to be prepared for that. Any other arguments? At the restaurant when you provoked Isabella, he was sober and in control. That's true. The operatives who were covering for Isabella and were supposed to foil her kidnapping noted that. But Dolores stepped in. It didn't take a scandal or a fight on our part. What kind of person is Dolores? We talked about this six months ago. She's Miguel's wife. And he was my friend and your employee. He's dead. I remembered. How are things with your wife? I'm still keeping her at a distance, even though it's hard. I kept the kids away from me too, just in case. My daughter needed money, I wouldn't give it to her. What I look like from the outside, I don't know. Well, I'm not an operative, I'm an engineer, and Enrique is going to kick my ass. I know, I know it's not your line of work, but you've done more in six months than your entire department has done in five years. And it doesn't look like Enrique's department is leaking any information. Don't worry about him, he'll protect you on the sly. Why didn't you back Isabella up when she went to Diana? Yeah, we screwed up. We didn't think she'd go to her. And what she did in there was a residual reaction from the drug. And nobody thought they'd drug Isabella at the restaurant. Nobody even saw that moment. Except when she was smoking marijuana. And that was Dolores. Why can't Enrique be told what I'm doing in this story? You can't. No one here knew about Miguel and they figured it out. I'm the only one who knows you. I didn't even report you to management. I told them I had a man on the inside, but I won't tell them who he is, so I got a reprimand. Who do you think betrayed Miguel? This asshole is from the region, and we already know him. They're gonna start working on him on Wednesday. Enrique will be guarding you from Wednesday. Tight. And on Wednesday, your other guard, the PR manager you hired, will start working with you, not a step away from them and some of the people who insured you at the restaurant. Is that too much security for me? I don't want to lose people. Your children are hidden, too. We'll keep an eye on Isabella. Is it hard to lead a double life? It's hard, especially to do not as you want, but as circumstances demand. Anyway, remember on Wednesday, Thursday at the guard base, you have nothing to do. It's all over on Thursday. Or Wednesday, when the business travelers arrive. Yes, here's a picture of a man Rodrigo met in the capital. His name is Martin. He owns a nightclub. No, it's not Martin. It's Diego, nicknamed Fluager. Rodrigo's friend from university. He was in our group too, but after graduation, he got lost. I see. We've already got some dirt on him, and he'll be picked up the day he arrives. We'll text some publicity when the business travelers arrive. Do you want to ride into town? That would be nice. Before entering the city, Rodrigo, who has spent a dressed-up week, told Rojo, You go to the office, see what's going on, call me back. I'll get in the truck with the guys and go to the security base. I'll be in cottage number two. From there, the territory of the base is clearly visible. We won't unload the dope. Maybe it'll go straight to the capital. Don't let the drivers go. Rodrigo got out and waited for the trucks coming from behind. In the meantime... He called Andres from a second phone and said, Come to cottage number two. Be ready to fly to the capital. When they arrived at the base, Rodrigo got off without entering the grounds and walked to cottage number two. Soon, Andres arrived in his car. He left the car at the first cottage and went to cottage number two. He went up to the second floor and met Rodrigo. He was very surprised. Rodrigo, ignoring Andres, dialed the number in Madrid. He was answered, Rodrigo, I'm listening. Martin, hi. I'm not Martin, I'm Diego the Weathervane. 
and they've come for me. They're breaking down the doors. Didn't you turn me in? Oh, come on. Okay, I believe you. You and I have been in the same harness for years. You could hear doors being broken down in there. Rodrigo understood everything. He had it all worked out. He immediately dialed Juan. Hi, Juan. Listen, why don't you come up to cottage number two? Where is it? What cottage? Rodrigo, is that you? Are you here yet? Listen, either you come here now, or I'll cut your woman to shreds. I'll be right there. Juan, having heard the threat against Isabella, did not check the sincerity of Rodrigo's words. He left the office, went downstairs, and went through the back door to his car in the garage. Ten minutes later, he was at the base and walked to cottage number two and went up to the second floor. In the office sat a pale Andres. Opposite him sat Rodrigo with a gun in his hand. Seeing Juan enter, Rodrigo, pointing out the window, asked, Your job? There, the SWAT team was detaining truck drivers and security guards. Rodrigo didn't know that Rojo had been picked up at the office, and he didn't even have time to call back. It was Enrique and the new peer manager who detained him, and therefore it distracted from Juan's security. After the detention, Enrique went to Juan's office, but the secretary said, and he left five minutes ago. At this time, the SWAT team was storming cottage number one, near where Andres's car was parked. Rodrigo held Juan at gunpoint, who turned to him. Let Isabella go. Where is she? Isabella? How should I know? I just got here and I didn't tell you she was here. Diana was right. She's your weak spot. But you screwed me at the restaurant. Then Rodrigo, turning to Andres, said, And you, you old stump, you're an old, old, old womanizer. So many years in the business. Didn't you notice Juan dumped you? He found out and saw everything while he was deputy. Look out the window, asshole. They've all been taken at once. In the capital, my friend was burned. Juan intervened in the conversation. Tell me, who killed Miguel? I did. He was just a hired gun, just like you. We leaked the competition to law enforcement so they could clean up the area. He went after a driver from our first garage, fed him something. He was on the pot for a week. The second, instead of reporting it, did not want to lose his travel and prize money and took Miguel as a second driver. A man from the region told us who was the co-driver and who he worked for. That's when I went with Rojo to intercept him. Only we knew we couldn't take him. That karate kid would have done us, especially since he saw us and realized it right away. That's when my Macedonian shooting skills came in handy. You didn't even know about this? Macedonian, is that two-handed? Yeah, chuckles. But you've got one gun. Why, here's the second one. Rodrigo snatched up the second barrel and continued. We put his body in the cab, unloaded the goods, and then drove the car into the abyss with him. We spared no fuel. There was a noise from downstairs as the SWAT team stormed the first floor. Rodrigo raised his pistols and shot at Andres and Juan. They fell. He wanted to shoot again. But he saw the barrel of the machine gun, so he threw the weapon on the floor and put his hands on the table. Isabella stayed at home. Dolores had come to visit. They drank tea in the kitchen and decided what to do now. Juan did not contact her, and Dolores could not help her friend. At that time, the doorbell rang. Isabella opened it. A handsome man with a serious face stood on the threshold and asked, Can I come in? If you're here to see Juan, he's not home. No, Isabella, I'm here to see you. My name is Victor. Victor walked into the living room and saw Dolores sitting in the kitchen. He said, Women, I have a lot of things to talk to you about. But for now, I'll tell you the main thing. Like what? About your husband, Andre. He loves you, unfortunately, it so happened that he was forced to use provocation in the restaurant, ostensibly to break with you, to keep you and the children out of serious trouble. What kind of trouble? Six months ago, we met him in the Capitol and asked him to help us investigate the murder of an undercover police officer, your husband, Dolores. Today, the investigation is complete. Unfortunately, Juan walked into a trap at the last moment. Rodrigo, 
who you know, said he had you in custody and would kill you if he didn't come. And he arrived unarmed, unsupported, and shot. He's in surgery now. The doctor says he'll live. Just like the other one Rodrigo shot. Where is he? I'm on the operating table right now. Cars outside. We'll go together. Who's the other one? Rodrigo's associate, whom he decided to get rid of. Former CEO Andres.